honored to be invited to come speak and uh, it's icing on the cake when Chuck Stiles introduces you. Um, uh, I meet this uh, brother, but I, when I say this, um, uh, uh, I met Chuck with uh, his unique hairdo <laughs> walk into our office in Orange County uh, when we were trying to organize uh, what nobody thought was an organizable universe of people. Uh, these are people with uh, no papers, they say. I never asked if they have a paper or not. As far as I know, they were working hard and they were being taken advantage of. And uh, we conspired with the Teamsters to go and give it a shot. And uh, I asked uh, Ron Herrera that we got to get you biggest guns in this campaign and uh, Chuck Stiles walked through the door and uh, long story short uh, I think seven months from when we started this is an organizing campaign we did out of our labor council and just really a good example of what the collective power looks like when uh, a labor movement works what it looks like and uh, Chuck the fight die tomorrow and uh, if someone after I die is uh, somehow in the spirits is going to ask me what have you done when you are on earth uh, I'm not making this up what I'll tell them is the little bit of work we did together uh, to provide sanitation workers a voice in Orange County would be if not the, the top of the line, it was one of the best, the, the best things that I have done in my life. And uh, if you come to DC in my office, I have a picture with Irma, who was one of the workers there. And uh, there's a tagline which says, Allah Baja on it, the photo with me and her. Uh, because I wasn't going to talk about this, so let me just kind of take a minute, uh, Mr. President. Um, I just want you to imagine, um, uh, you know, uh, Chuck knows, and Maria Lena knows, Ron Herrera rocks. Ron Herrera is the president of the Teamsters Local, and he's the national vice president of the Teamsters now. Um, Ron used to tell me that uh, we don't have that much of a density in LA County, but in Orange County, we have 95% of trash organized. And one day, just taking a ride with him, we went by Anaheim, and I see Hundreds of people coming in and hundreds of people walk out of the sanitation plant. And I asked, Ron, are they your members? And Ron said, uh, no, they're not. I'm like, are they part of your calculation? He said, no, we're counting drivers. I said, then you're mad as well. Then he started telling me this horror story of they tried to organize them in 1998 or 99. And when they submitted the cards to have an election, the company called ICE, and the vast majority of them were deported within a week. And that left a bad test the Teamsters that they never wanted to do that again. They never wanted to investigate something and workers, workers getting deported. So that's when we started seeing the power of a community coming together. Because what we did was we gathered about 30 church leaders and community organizations and we told them, this is your job for us. Soften up this company for us. So we got organized. So we sent a delegation of church leaders and they asked straight up to the company, why are you getting your workers deported because they are asking you for a voice at work. Of course they denied it. Then we got a comment that they were never going to do that again. Then Chuck came in, and our organizers did what they did. And trash workers, people who with their hands go through garbage every day, <coughs> voted to join the Great Team Stress Union. And today, those workers enjoy paid vacation. They have family health care. They have a pension plan. They have a process where they get fired or hired and how they get disciplined. Brothers and sisters, I wasn't going to talk about that, but since Chuck introduced me, I have to talk about it because 
I am the labor movement to do those kind of things. If we don't care about workers like that, what the hell are we doing? So this is why I am here today, Georgia. That's why I keep coming back to Georgia. That's why I keep coming back to the South. Because there are millions and millions of people who want to be part of you, who want to be marching amongst you, who want to fight along with you. And they want to better their lives, and when their lives become better, your members' lives become better. Everybody's lives become better. But we have to organize ourselves before we try to organize other people. And when we organize, the South will lead the country to take us back to America's promise. America's promise of if you get up in the morning and go to work, you should be honored at your job. And what you do should be respected, and you should be respected at the workplace. Asking for a voice at work should not be grounds for you to be dismissed and be fired. I think we can do that. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. But in order for us to do that, we got to improve on the things that we're good at. we got to change the things that we're stuck at. Because I don't know how many of you see it. This company is not working for working people. It's just not. You know, like baseball players have agents and basketball players have agents, football players have agents, right? Dude? And you all, all of us, our job is to work agents for anybody who goes to work. And when your client is not being treated well, it is your responsibility to fight back. And I'm here to tell you today, yes, you can create an organization that's powerful as individual unions. You can't have the best industrial union, you can't have the best hotel workers union, you can't have the best construction trade union. But if we don't bring all of them together, and we get workers to care about each other. We have organizations who don't have a movement. And I think it's about time we start a movement. And in order to start a movement, we have to live up the mantra that we always preach about. That's solidarity. And solidarity should not be on paper. Solidarity should be on practice. Solidarity manifests itself. And only solidarity manifests itself. When a bus driver gets serious and stands up and fights for a janitor. When the janitor cares about what's happening to the nurse. When the nurse cares about what's happening to someone who fixes the beds at the, at, the, at the hotels. That is where we have to get to. We have to conspire together. How do we get to that point? How do we leave the mantra of an injury to one is an injury to all? That's why our forefathers created this organization. Sometimes we have to go back to the basics. That's why they created these things called state federations. So that at the state level all the unions can come together and conspire together. That's why they created these things called labor councils. That, that, that should be the place where the community and all the unions can come in and conspire and lean on each other and become powerful and win for each other. I think that's what we're trying to do here today. And I'm here to congratulate you and urge you. Because we need a course correction. correction. We need change. Our country is in a chaos. The South is in a chaos. Georgia is in a chaos. But let me tell you this. Let's not be afraid of that chaos. But nothing good comes out without the chaos. You look at the Chinese symbol for crisis. It's two symbols. One of them is danger, the other one is opportunity. When you put them together, they create crisis. There has never been an opportunity by creating without a crisis. There has never been any of our dangerous things happen to us because without, without crisis. So brothers and sisters, we're in crisis. 
It's up to you which one of the Chinese football you want to pay. We can't make this an opportunity. When you are Frederick's trying to get the public sector, this is a crisis. But I think out of this crisis we come birth a new, vibrant, fighting labor movement. Maria Elena can tell you, California didn't grow on it. Actually, everything bad you deal with came out of California. From paycheck deception, to, char to charter schools, English only, and one of the most anti-immigrant initiatives the country has ever seen, from Pani Center. But people in California went through those crises and chose opportunity. And because of that, they have a growing and vibrant labor movement. Not there yet, but it's on its way out. So I'm here to conspire with you. So let me know. Does anybody, everybody here think that we could be better than what we are? Yes. Are you willing to work and to do your part? To be better than what we are. Yes. Yes. If, if that is what we want to do, I have no doubt. I have no doubt we can get there. Because I come to the south because it's not because the food is great. The food is good here. <laughs> but it's not the reason that I come here. Because in the bottom of my heart, I know, and I know it, the south is not as Mary McNeil says all the time, a reflection of our past. But the South is a prediction of where our, where our future is going. The South is setting the tone for the rest of the country. And I just don't think we can fix America without fixing the South. responsibility on you. I know we don't have enough resources. I know we don't have enough of anything to do anything. But we just have to be smarter. We just have to be like Chuck said, outwork the other side in order to get to where we want to get to. So there are a lot of great things happening in the state. Working America, for example, has started an office in me. I think, Charlie, I heard that they, they will be starting training people for 2016 election. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. I'm going to keep on coming here. Take advantage of me. Take advantage of every little thing that we have. Because God knows the workers need it. The workers need it in this country. So whatever you're going to do, it has to be your day. It has to be Georgia. Fed. Let me tell you this. Especially, how many of you here are from Atlanta? Nobody from Atlanta. <laughs> A lot of you. I, I, I get to remind you about this. You gotta quit acting like the sound. Not like that. You don't have the predicament that the rest of the South has. You have a diverse labor movement in Atlanta. You have leading industries in Atlanta. If being a Democrat is the best thing you're gonna get, you have a city full of Democrats. Make it work. Enough of the excuses. Let's make it work. There is no reason Atlanta cannot be just like Los Angeles, like Chicago, and like New York. The only limitation is our own limitation and where we want it to get to. Even with all that I said, with the numbers I said about Atlanta, we're too small to win on our own. 
that if you have vibrant community organizations that are willing to partner with you, that are willing to march with you, that are willing to work with you. Sometimes it comes at the cost. Sometimes it means you have to compromise a little bit to sit at the table with other people. But we're not the mighty, powerful labor movement that we used to be to tell people that get out of the door, get out of this room, because we're not 100% with you. We're just that in that position to do that. But when we open our doors up and we invite the immigrants in, when we are open our doors up and we invite the Black Lives Matter people in, when we open our doors up and we invite the worker centers in, that is how we piece together the power. And that's what we have to do. And if we have our own rules and our own regulations, and our own bylaws, study on the way of what we need to do, the power is with people in this room to change those rules, to change those standards, to get rid of those barriers so we can get where we need to get to. Because it's not about me, it's not about Ristranka, it's not about Dewey, it's not about Charlie, it's about people who get up in the morning and go to oil at work that are counting on us to deliver for them enough to make food. Congratulations on what you have started. Congratulations on what you have started. And I really look forward to coming and celebrate with you on every increment of progress that we're going to make. Because as goes Georgia, goes the South. As goes the South, goes the country. And the country is betting on you. The country is counting on you. The county, the country is looking up to you to deliver for them. And I have no doubt, working together, brothers and sisters, we can deliver for this country and we can restore America back to the promise of hard work pays. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you.